This is the Art of Network Engineering podcast. In this podcast, we'll explore tools, technologies, and talented people. We aim to bring you information to expand your skill sets and toolbox and share the stories of fellow network engineers. Welcome to the Art of Network Engineering podcast. I am 25% of your hosts. Today, I'm actually 33% of your hosts. 33.3 repeating. For those of you who really keep me score at home, my name is Aaron Weiler. You can find me all over the internet at Aaron Engineered, all one word, D at the end. Uh, with me, I have AJ Murray. How's it going? You can find him everywhere on the internet at no blinky blinky. Noblinkyblinky.com. Um, and last and certainly not least, rounding out this evening's illustrious panel of co hosts is Andy, the soon to be network ar- architect, Lat Pef. Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> He's on the fast track. If you guys are listening to the episodes, you know that Andy is soaking everything up like a sponge because he's secretly doing this just for his own benefit so that someday he can better himself um, in his career. And kind of that's the whole idea for the whole thing anyway, I guess. Um, today we're doing a little show and tell. We have uh, someone with us that we're going to be interviewing. Um, his name's Taylor. Uh, he works with AJ at Red River. Um, I don't know if I can steal his whole thunder, but we're going to get a little backstory from him and kind of see where he's at. And the reason why we brought him on is because he gives a different perspective than some of the other guests, and including ourselves, in that he's still quite young. So that can be relatable to some folks out there. Um, but he's done a lot, uh, a lot more than us older folks dare i say older folks um so we're just gonna try to get his background pick his brain a little bit and see what kind of gems he can give us uh no pressure taylor so taylor what where do you work you work at you work with aj where do you recover that what is your title over there so i think officially i am a network deployment engineer for red river so on the post sales side side of things okay so i think when we talked about on the episode with danny uh finan there was a lot of cool stuff that came up. Um, one of which was something that I brought up too, which is as a network architect, we are, we're the ones that basically decide a bunch of stuff like, Hey, you're going to get this equipment. You're going to get this technology. And then it's you Taylor that has to do all the dirty work. Is that accurate? Yeah, absolutely. And I I would say, you know, sometimes uh, we get a little bit dirtier than others. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> do tell um we'll, hold on we'll get back to that um we want to start real quickly since we know where you're at now uh how old are you by the way if you don't mind me asking uh 24 i believe you believe okay <laughs> yeah ni- 90 i was born in 96 so that would make me 24 years old. all right yeah um okay 24. what were you so, doing in 1996 aaron i was in high school <laughs> 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 I don't know if I'm gonna uh, if if Andy wants to answer that question. <laughs> Andy, yeah, uh, Andy. We actually know what Andy is doing. He was skydiving with a ponytail. <laughs> um, if, you, if you guys, if you guys want the backstory of that, feel free to hit us up in the Discord channel because boy, oh boy, is that a gem. Um, so, so you were born um, when most of us were already living our lives. Uh, You've already lost track of your age at the at the ripe age of 24, which is not a good sign. So where did you start? Did you go to college? Were you always tinkering around with stuff in high school, like as a kid? Like, walk us through that. So, yeah. So I had an early start as well. So my dad actually, um, he's also in this field. So he's a systems administrator. Um, and when I was, I believe, about eight he handed me a laptop for my birthday. And from there, it was the constant, let's break this, let's see if we can get it back together. There was a lot of times where he needed to intervene. And from there, you know, the saying is in my family that uh, he created a monster at about eight to 10 years old. Um, 
and I kind of ran with that through high school. Uh, I was very fortunate to be able to work in the school's auditorium doing some audio engineering. Oh, cool. Um, and then, yeah, I did, I did end up getting my bachelor's degree at Champlain college up in Vermont. Um, uh, computer networking and cybersecurity was the the full bachelor's. So did you emerge out of that with any certifications too, or is it just the degree? Uh, so by the time I was done with college, I did have my CSENT. Um, but that was, uh, I did that on my own time, uh, through my internship that I was doing at the end of college. So you got, so you went to college, you, did you finish in four years? So you're out at 22? Yep. Okay, so four years. during that last year or so, you're doing an internship somewhere. How did you pull that off? So my internship actually started the second semester of my sophomore well, year. Well, hey, hang on, hang on. Remember a few episodes back when I talked about that guy that came in and knocked the interview out of the park? This is it's this guy. It's this guy. Mm. It's this guy. The This is the mysterious dude that you spoke of. This guy right here. This this guy. Okay, that's what, why to I, what do I, we owe I, the that's pleasure? Why he's, that's why he's here. Okay, that makes sense now. I was wondering how you swindled your way into this. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, dude. Andy said it earlier. You're not you're not playing around, brother. <laughs> we're, but we're gonna nah. get to that. So you you had an internship at Red River. Nope. At, okay. At a different company. Okay, at a different company. Okay, so go back to the internship. So first of all, was that like a school sponsored thing, or how did you pull that off? Uh, yeah, I would say it's it's somewhat of a school sponsor thing. Uh, Champlain did something a little bit different with their um, their career program. Um, they had what was known as a resume book, where you would give your resume to the college. They would put it into, they would combine them all, um, sort them out, and employers would be able to ask the college, um, "Hey, we're looking for exposition. Uh, here are some requirements. What resumes may fit that build?" Oh, that's pretty slick. I. W- you know, we always talk about like the different paths you could take to get into what it is you want to get into. Um, IT more specifically, I guess networking even more specifically. And, you know, the questions always come up and we talk about it every episode, college, certs, neither, both. Um, I would say that based on what you just told us, another feather in the cap for college is that it's in their best interest to find you something or find you a place to work, right? Because they're a business and they strive on being able to, you know, out business other college businesses, which is, Hey, we have a 99% placement rate, right? So if you were thinking like, Oh, what a waste of time college would be think again, because there are places like this and and this is a community college, right? Uh, no, this was a, a private school. Oh, private school. Okay. So private school, you know, point being, you know, you don't have to get into some crazy Ivy League school or a Big Ten school or Pac-10 school if you're me over here. You know, you don't have to go to UCLA. You can go to a college that fits what it is you're trying to achieve rather than the college just accepting you for whatever, right? Because you, you have a choice to go places. So why not treat it like a job too? where it's like, hey, at the end of this program, and hopefully now you know this is possible, I can get an internship, and that's going to get you the experience that everybody's looking for because nobody just wants certs, right? We always hear this too. Oh, they're looking for five years experience, but I just got out of college. But it sounds to me like that's possible anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I I think, you know, Champlain is definitely a unique school, um, you know, they have their whole upside down curriculum where you're starting your major related classes the moment you start classes your first year. That's cool. Um, and, you know, they take a huge amount of pride in their placement at the end of the year. I, you know, I, I forget the exact number, but um, it's something like 98 percent of all students have some sort of job within six months after they graduate. And they, they use that on their marketing material. Absolutely. That's, you know, that's a huge thing for them. Yeah. that So, you know, keep in mind if you're, uh, you know, out there looking for colleges or looking for something to get into, you can shop around, you know. Um, I didn't have good grades and I got into college. <laughs> Same here. 
<laughs> yeah, they, they're like, okay, you're paying us, right? I'm like, yeah, I really don't see what the problem is here. I'm paying you. <laughs> well, who cares what my grades are? I still got to pay you. Um, but yeah, that that's okay. So that's good to know. So you got you got the uh, internship while you were still in college. You finished college. I mean, this is only two years ago, so we could probably just give your whole life story here and it only take about five <laughs> minutes. But all right, so now you're what? You're 22. You just graduated. Are you still at the internship? Uh, so by that time, I was still at the same company, so the same manufacturing company, but I was uh, promoted to a sysadmin or a jun- junior sysadmin. Um, so I was taking on a little bit more responsibility, no longer just looking after the help desk. Um, you know, started looking after the virtual environment, working on some key projects with um, with our partners at play. So you started at the help desk, though? Yep, that, that was my... Yeah, absolutely. That was my primary responsibility, the help desk, so that the other members, you know, AJ included, could focus on some of the, you know, the more higher level tasks, the bigger projects. Got it. So AJ then worked it with you at the other company. Correct. Yeah, yep. I hired Taylor. I was the IT manager at the time. Okay. See, this this it's all making sense now. <laughs> so so AJ jumps ship, he goes to Red River. He says, hey, I got this kid you guys should hire. <laughs> right? It didn't quite happen that way. Kind well, of that way. Well, then tell us how it happened. <laughs> Don't let me speculate. Tell me the, give me the dirty details. AJ, give me the details. I want to hear from your mouth. The opposite side right, of the so, fence. So uh, I, I left the manufacturing company in the fall of 2018 um, I worked at a small MSP in the area for about four months. Uh, I was oversold on the position that I uh, was applying for, or not not on the position. I was oversold on the company. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so once I got into the company, I I will say that culture means a lot to me. Yeah. And the culture at that company was not as was sold to me. And, uh, and so I just kind of knew like this, this is not the place for me. And I kind of realized that pretty quickly. Um, I was familiar with Red River because Red River was my partner when Taylor and I were working together. And and I had had interactions with Red River on previous occasions, like throughout my career. They're, they're a a pretty good partner up in this area. And that's, that's what, you know, without me being an employee there, like I've, I've worked with them in the past at at different, uh, employers. So, um, so I saw a position open for network deployment engineer um, in like late, yeah, it was late 2018, like around Christmas time. And so I, I applied for the position. I think Taylor also applied for the same position. I did, yep. <laughs> oh, but snap. He, he had, How does he, that make you feel? <laughs> he he had other irons in the fire as well. And the one of the other companies that he had applied to had – job offered him before he had an in-person interview at red river so he took that position and worked somewhere else for six months okay um so i got hired on to red river um taylor i think at least had one phone call interview at red river and uh everybody liked what they heard and saw i continued to talk him up because i i think very highly of him well you knew him uh, so that's interesting yeah 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 um, and so when the opportunity came up that to hire another engineer in this area, cause we just had, you know, more projects coming on, uh, he was of course the first person that came to mind and, uh, they kind of went after him. Hmm. Rightly so. Already in a position where people are coming after you. How does that, <laughs> how does that make you feel? I, I think it's pretty cool. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, it's, it's tough. Cause I, I know I, I'm still green in this field. You know, I have, a lot of years ahead of me and you know it's you know i understand the value of being humble and not overstepping where you actually belong you know knowing your place in the environment so you know to me i still haven't fully um you know contained you know the fact that there are companies that wanted me on their team you know more than just a, Hey, your resume fits the the bill, you know, let's try you out. But like, there was actually people that, you know, okay, we want Taylor. So, okay. Then for everybody that's listening to this, this, cause we're all about giving beneficial little nuggets, right? I referred to them as gems earlier, but I think nuggets is cooler because nuggets are, are tastier. So what, 
it, what can I do if I'm in college right now? Um, what can I do to mimic what you did? Like, how do I get people to come after me? Passion. Okay. In, define that then. Cause, so, so let's say I do have passion, but I'm like what Malcolm Gladwell would call mismatched where, you know, my outward appearance and demeanor does not mimic that of what I actually feel like I eat, breathe and sleep information technology, but I just look like a grumpy pissed off old dude. How, how so do you, I, how do you, uh, cause I'm, what I'm getting at is passion just can't be like, you know, you talk about it and you get all excited when you do it. Right. I mean, what, it, where's your proof that you're passionate? And, and I, I don't even know if I have like a, in the rack it, behind him. <laughs> yeah. Should be next to you, but yeah, go on. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, pa- passion. I mean, excitement for the the work that you're doing, the stuff that you're you're playing with. I mean, it's shown in different ways. I I l- tend to think like I don't do facial expressions too well. Like I'm a I tend to be a very stoic person, so you know I tend to rely on either non visual cues, you know, verbal cues, you know, talking about it, constantly talking about it, moving a thousand miles an hour and jumping between all the technology stacks. Um, I, I've always been a huge proponent proponent of the, uh, the home lab. Okay. I, mean, I, if I had my way, I would have racks on racks on racks on gear, but so did I you use 25 you, you, some of us only have 20, but so you you used the money that you were making at these IT jobs to buy more IT stuff. Yeah, absolutely. You just like feedback into yourself. What a great investment. You know, don't get like your first $60,000 job and go out and just start wasting money. <laughs> I mean, the thing about this industry, because you mentioned it earlier, is that you're young, you know, you have many years ahead of you. I still feel the same way. Um, I'm sure Andy does too, especially when you look at like how much has changed since I was 24 um, and how like most of that information, although it was good, like it just cycles through so quickly, like in this industry, it's not like medicine, right? Where, well, the, you know, there's new medicines that come out, but like the human body is always the same, right? Like, like those textbooks can be hundreds of years old, uh, most of that stuff is like irrelevant to us other than some like core fundamentals, right? Like bits and bytes and things like that. Like how, how does that work? But you know, you're constantly refreshing yourself. How do you do that? Or how do you see that you're going to be doing that? So when, when you are my age or you are AJ's or Andy's age, how are you going to stay not messing around <laughs> as you are right now? I, I just keep stealing that from Andy. So I, I mean a lot, a lot has changed in, in like two years. I mean, it's crazy how fast this stuff moves. Yep. Um, I, I tend to like, I, I think I tend to overstep on what technologies I'm supposed to be focusing on. So, you know, like this whole week, I sat in on a, an architect class for VMware multi-cloud. So we're talking cloud foundation, you know, combining your on-prem data centers to AWS, Azure, GCP. I honestly, I am not going to deploy any of that anytime soon. Right. And I honestly probably had no business sitting in the class, but that's where technology is right now, especially in the virtualization side. You know, we're talking Kubernetes, we're talking containerization and microservices. So if I can just take a little bit of that information to stay relevant then when it comes time to actually dig my teeth, in, teeth into it, you know, a couple years from now, I'll have some information to just fall back on. And, you know, then I'm just expanding on it instead of starting from fresh. Yeah. I, I think what I just learned too, while you were saying that is something that's pretty interesting, which is everybody at some point comes to like this fork in the road a lot of times there's a fork in the road very early on where it's like, I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing. I mean, we all went through it. It was like, doesn't sound like you did because you've been doing this since you were eight and laptops didn't exist when I was eight. 
but <laughs> hey, I started on a Pentium three. Yeah, <laughs> Windows XP. Oh man. Um, so to to kind of back up your point, but also to bring it around to like somebody that's like just starting out. I think the reason why folks get into this analysis paralysis stage when they're first starting out, you know, should I get this cert? Should I go to this college? What degree should I get? It's especially true with the certs because you notice everybody's always asking, well, should I get this? Should I get the Azure? Is it worth getting? Should I, is it worth it? Should I, you know, worth is so like intrinsic, like stop projecting that on other people. Right. But point being, you know, people that are just starting out are trying to figure out, hey, which way do I go to get the best bang for my buck, right? I'm trying to make more money. I'm trying to be smarter. I'm trying to do all these things. But from what you just said, it's like that just doesn't stop. No, it never will stop. That's the beauty of our field. You know, it's going to change every single day. And you and you in particular, you know, are still figuring it out, right? Like you're, you, you said, I, I sat on a, a multi-cloud VMware uh, seminar and, you know, it's completely irrelevant for the most part as to what I'm doing in my day-to-day -day job, but I just wanted to get a little bit of knowledge. I think maybe the, the best skill you can learn as like a networking professional maybe is like finding the best things to fill your time with because nobody wants to waste their time which is why everybody starting out has no idea what they're doing yet but but they really don't have any idea as to like what they want to do and how to get there once you're there like you are like the rest of us are the trick is you have to keep going so you have to continually do that but you already got out over the initial hump which was like all right which path do i take and how do i do that but it just doesn't stop happening folks <laughs> you you the one thing you do get good at is not necessarily the technology, but understanding what it is you need to be learning at what time. Does that make sense? I mean, like, there's just so many options, dude. Like, even within every vendor, like Cisco, you mentioned VMware. There's a thousand of those out there, um, and you've got a thousand of them, <laughs> oddly enough. Um, so you do have a bunch of certs, though, currently, right? Like... Name, name off a couple that you've got. Actually, do me a favor. Name off all the certs you've gotten since January of this year. It being uh, 2020 this year. Okay. So I've, I've got, I'm Cisco certified specialist in enterprise enterprise. So that that's the, um, the encore exam okay. for CCNP enterprise. Okay. And then I've also, I got uh, two VCPs, VMware certified professional in data center virtualization, as well as desktop and mobility. So we're talking VDI on that front. And then I also just passed my VCAP. So that's a VMware certified advanced professional in data center design. So you're not messing around. <laughs> that would I'll, be four certs yeah, in seven four, months. Four professional certs in seven months technically okay technically. so guys let, let's and let's, two of them happen in the same week don't oh, be modest taylor <laughs> hold don't on hold on i'll get to yeah, that I'll... in a second i'll get to that in a second <laughs> professional certs guys it, it would be hard enough to like let's say all the ccna tracks still existed just as an example right like wireless uh data center service provider that would be hard to do with that even though most of the disciplines are all networking right but those are all associate level certs. You got four professional certs in seven months. What's your secret, dude? So the, the to be honest, the the Cisco the Encore exam took a while. I I've technically been working on that since February of last year when I got my CCNA. So initially started going down the route switch track, took the switch exam twice, uh, wasn't able to pass it. So you know, that's kind of been a constant endeavor for me. Um, and it's going to continue to be a constant endeavor as I, you know, finish up NP Enterprise and then eventually go on to NP Data Center. Um, all of the VMware certs, uh, you know, AJ kind of alluded to it. Those were taken in a period of about three weeks. Um, and a lot of that, I, I think, is because, you know, I have my home lab. 
I'm in VMware almost every single night, spinning up, tearing down everything about the web. So all of that material is just super fresh in my mind. And, you know, for the, the design exam, you know, there was a ton of new concepts for me because it's taking the technical backing of the VMware environment, but applying a very different lens. So looking at it from the business perspective, looking at risk and how these different solutions solve key business, you know, criteria. Goals. Yep. Yeah, yep. goals. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're obviously going to be speaking my language there when you start talking design, because that's, that's my wheelhouse. And Andy's ears perked up too, because that's something he's passionate about as well. Network Architect 2020. Architect 2020. <laughs> Andy Laptop. Uh, so you got all these certs. So then that makes sense. VMware, you're in every day. You have the lab, you do that. So it's all familiar. So like, it's really just learning like certain nuances and stuff like that. Uh, what about something you're not in day to day that you're learning like Encore, for instance, how does a, how do you study for that? Like, I know you got lab, book, video, whatever, but do you dedicate a certain amount of time every night? You know, what does that look like? So it, it's a little bit, you know, I don't really have a schedule and I, I should have one. Um, a lot of my Cisco prep comes from recently started using CML 2.0 a lot more and more. So the next revision of viral. Um, and then, you know, Boston, the Boston exams are top notch. You know, they're as close to a Cisco exam as you can get. And I'll keep running through that stuff going through every single question until I feel confident about the material, not necessarily the question and answer. Um, I, I hate studying based on a test. You know, I want to know the material and if I don't feel comfortable with the material, I, I don't want to take the test. So I actually, that was the, I took the design exam a couple of weeks ago and there was a ton of multicast on it mm -hmm. and I am not proficient enough in multicast to even, you know, be thinking about taking the design again, the design exam again. Hmm. And I think you hit on something that's important there um, because people are always looking to figure out what cert is the most important and the most relevant, but it's not the cert that's important. The cert just verifies to the rest of the world that you know your stuff. The point is you should be learning those technologies because your ultimate goal clearly is to get a job using those disciplines. So why would you spend your time trying to learn answers or like exam dumps or something when, you know, they're just going to thrust you into something and you're not going to have, you're going to be like Andy on day one. They're going to ask you to log into something and you're going to be putting your AD credentials in. <laughs> That's like the best story ever. He's got like two in a row where like just, uh, his first day of school, he goes in and the teacher makes him do like a, a full blown history report for no reason. Um, poor guy. That's how we all feel for him. Um, yeah, I can, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> it makes for good. It's good TV. Um, <clears throat> so, so yeah, I got a question. I, I got a couple questions for Taylor. I, I want to throw out there. So, is this stuff is this stuff easy to you? Because you know, uh, four professional certs in, in seven months. I mean, I don't think I could do the CCNA now in seven months, and I've passed most of the MP exams. The old one. I mean, you just you seem to be breezing through this stuff, and and. You know, is this stuff easy to you or you're just working that hard? Because I, I hear that you're passionate and you're following stuff that you, you're interested in, which which helps. But are, are you working hard at this or are you just like, oh, yeah, dude, it's it's just what I do. I just I just pass exams. No problem. I, I wouldn't say it's easy. I think I've been very lucky that a lot of the projects that I've worked on, you know, not only at Red River, but at my previous bar, um, you know, the, the stuff, the projects are relevant, you know, to the entire technology stack. So, you know, before Red River, I was working at a, a local bar MSP. And one of the big projects I was helping out was Horizon. So I got to become familiar with, you know, some of the inner workings of Horizon, the different pieces of it and how they loosely connected together. 
So that gave me a great foundation to go play with that at home, you know, especially with the expert licensing that I get for having my blog and, you know, setting it up, tearing it down. And then I have, you know, I would say 70, 75% of the material on the, the BCP. Um, when I came over to Red Ripper, one of the, the big projects that needed to close before I was hired was this huge international company that we were spinning up two greenfield data centers. So we were talking uh, three sets, three pairs of Nexus 9Ks with Palo Alto firewalls, uh, you know, six ISRs at each data center, and then all of the inner workings con circuits to not only between the two data centers, but to um, Azure over express route. So I was able to just kind of run with a lot of that and, uh, you know, learn as much as I can in a very short amount of time and, you know, really set the information that I knew about networking at, you know, the professional level in my brain. So like yeah, your retention seems insane. It does. I, I think you just, up and, and keeping you just under, you just uncovered it though, Andy, I think, cause go back to what we were talking about earlier. It's like, people are trying to figure out what they need to do to get to point B. It sounds to me like you, they, a company was like, Hey dude, Taylor, we need you to do VMware. And you're like, okay. And you just did it. And then, you were like, okay, I like this. And then you got the cert, right? Instead of studying, sitting down and reading VMware documentation and going, all right, I'm, I'm getting ready for this test. Oh man, none of this makes any sense to me. You already had the experience. And I'm not saying that that's what made it easy or anything like that, but I think that your approach was different than most. And that's and just I, me speculating. Yeah, I think you're spot on because you look at, you know, I have aspirations to get my CCNP data center. So when, we were on, when AJ and I were on the customer side, the two big projects that we did was a, a network upgrade, which included Nexus 9K. That project kind of cemented my love for the Nexus platform. And now I just want every single Nexus project that comes across the, the plate. The other project was Cisco Hyperflex. So, you know, compute hyperconverged uh, solution where the, you know, compute and storage are back on the physical server. And then they have these wonderful pieces of technology called the fabric interconnects that is a centralized management plane for the entire solution. And, you know, those two platforms, that's the bread and butter of the CCNA data center or CCNP data center. Hmm. So, so then that makes sense. So clearly you chose, because you, you pointed out earlier, I would like to get CCNP data center, not just like route switch or enterprise, whatever we're calling it nowadays. Um, and that's because of your experience with Nexus and the data center environment, also with obviously hypervisors, more specifically VMware. Um, that's interesting. That's a good point. So and, what uh, you're doing at work drives what you're studying and starting up on, right? Uh, absolutely. And, okay. and you know, there was a time where you know I was also I had my fingers in the phone system on the customer side, and I really wanted CCNA Collab. You know, at that time while that exam was still there, but. Now that, you know, it's almost two years since I've been on the customer side um, and I, I haven't really done a whole lot of phone system projects, like I, I have zero desire to do it. Like I, I think I've found the path that I want to go down and I want to really, you know, get to know. Can, can I jump back to your internship for one second? How, how did you jump from help desk to virtualization? So... Nobody wanted to do it. <laughs> no, <laughs> right. you know, were, were you that really bright kid that they're like, wow, we should give them this? Or was it, you know, your passion, you, you like vert and you were into it already? Like, how, how do you make that jump? Because I think getting from help desk to the next thing, it comes up a lot. Yeah. So, you know, I, I knew about virtualization, um, you know, all through college. We used that at Champlain, you know, more the workstation, you know, perspective. So on the end user's computer. Hmm. Um, but, you know, once I started seeing the corporate environment and how, you know, they had the luxury, you know, they had both VMware and Hyper-V in the environment. And there was some, you know, unforeseen circumstances that happened, you know, things we couldn't control. And I got, you know, more access than I probably should have at a time or, you know, AJ just trusted the hell out of me. Yes. Um, and I, I was, I started doing like, uh, you know, the vCenter deployments, you know, upgrading vCenter, um, you know, and this was on an international level. This wasn't just, 
in you know the state of vermont this was in the uk we had offices in india and china like we touched everything this was at the internship yep so so let me let me just jump in there real quick so th- there's a there's a lot of things that contributed to taylor's success uh number one was himself you know le- like i said when he came in and interviewed and we were talking to him you he might think that he doesn't show his heart on his sleeve but he does he he got very outwardly excited like you know you could see him like physically getting excited and be like wow like you know you could see the wheel spinning like you know if he got in this opportunity he would get hands on with this stuff and that that was obviously very exciting for him and that's why we picked him because we wanted to give somebody an opportunity who wanted the opportunity not just somebody that was like yeah you know whatever this would be cool His um passion was Taylor, visible, it was, right yeah it was very visible and it was it was really cool not just eh, it could be cool uh, and so that's why we gave him the opportunity. Um, the, as Taylor alluded to, there were, a, you know, there was a situation that was kind of out of our control. Uh, and at the other time or at the same time, um, the company was going through some changes where the role of IT lead was shifting from the UK over to the US. And so um, I was kind of being elevated from local IT manager to global IT director. So now I wasn't just responsible for, you know, the US portion of of the IT, it now became I'm responsible for all of the IT in UK, India, China, as well. And so of course, like with other businesses, they didn't want to make the investment in additional uh, in additional heads for IT. And so now all of this additional responsibility still fell on a very small team. So we, we didn't have guys that just did exchange or just did active directory. Everybody did everything. You know, we you could probably subdivide the IT team into like two different teams. Like one was infrastructure and the other side was apps. So, you know, we handled layers like one through six and then we had another team that did layer seven. Yeah, it sounds like a roll with the punches scenario. You know, the the business will do what the business does, right? Oh, hey, we're merging with this company. Oh, hey, we're laying off half of you. Uh, also, guys, congratulations for doing that all on your own. You just proved that we don't need to hire more people. Um, <laughs> I love that one. Um, but we know it's like when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. <laughs> you know, they're like, they're like, hey, guess what? You're doing VMware. You're like, yeah, I'll s- I don't care. Give me the VMware. And you take the VMware and then you get certified three times in the same week. So it's it's an like life is obviously going to give you unpredicted stuff especially like job description wise don't please don't take those for gospel right they they can only write down so much which is why they write down a ton of ridiculous stuff but just be prepared to do anything and embrace it if you don't like it don't keep doing it but if you do like it like you run across nexus for instance in taylor's situation and you happen to love the platform you do exactly what he does which is hey when's the next nexus project coming up put me on that I mean, it's really not that yeah. difficult to do, right? Like I'm, 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 you know, we're poking fun in a, in a way of like making it sound easy, but Taylor, I mean, you're living proof, right? That it really is just that easy, right? Yeah. I mean, having open dialogue with, you know, whoever is assigning projects, whoever is, you know, giving you work to do your manager uh, is critical. I mean, I talk to my manager every single day at, at a bare minimum, sometimes like three, four times a day, even if it's just about stupid stuff. You know, it's having that that relationship with with the, the hand that feeds you. Yeah. Well, because, right, because ultimately that hand can stop feeding you too, right? We talked about on one of the episodes, we talked about soft skills. Actually, I just made a pun in our Discord channel. By the way, if you're not in the Discord channel, find a link in the description, hit up our website, head on over. You'll find all of us in there. Um, but it's soft skills pay the bills, right? Yep. You guys saw me say that. I didn't see anybody clap, so I'm assuming no one's seen it yet. Um, <laughs> I thought about clapping. Yeah, I bet you did. <laughs> I bet you did. Real long and hard, too, huh? Yeah, I was like, nah, I'm not giving him that. It's cute, <laughs> yeah. but nah, his head's big enough. I'm good. <laughs> it's true, It's true though, right? So soft skills pay the bills because, yeah. you know, you just said it like you're, t- you're having open dialogue with the hand that feeds you, and... That person ultimately is in charge of your fate. AJ at one point was in charge of your fate. You know, he was the one, you know, writing your check so that you could eat, right? Like, that's crazy. 
And so you're asking him, and then what happens? AJ leaves the company, and then he gets a new position, and guess who he goes to? The same dude that he's used to. I mean, the story can write itself if you just, like, you know, start the first chapter off right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it, like it'll just keep go- it'll just keep evolving. You know, it might it might take a couple of twists and turns, but it's like a choose your own adventure book, right? You you can choose what to do. You know, dang well what's happening and what's about to come up. But like, you're you're always and I said this earlier. You're always at some point forced with like a fork in the road. There's no wrong answer. Just you know, try to feed your passion if you can do that roll with the punches roll with the punches F- feed um, your passion or find one keep I'm going until you on, find one i'm hung up on eight-year-old taylor <laughs> okay yeah please because if you found your passion at eight i mean i'm, I'm having a hard time liking you as it is <laughs> it took me it took, no i mean just because you're you're kicking so much butt i mean do, did you ever ask your dad like i mean who gives an eight-year-old a, a laptop like what was in his head was he I mean, he was in tech, right? So was he just kind of like, hey, here's a laptop, do what you want? Or do you think he was trying to, you know, give you a taste, push in a direction? I mean, it, I'm amazed that at that age, you you got pumped about tech and, and started into it. It's, it's just because for me, it, it was in my 30s when I finally figured out, oh, wow, this is great. I love it. Let me try to, you know, make a living. I mean, eight years old, dude, that's that's insane. It's, yeah, it's awesome. I, I don't I don't know what his, his intentions are were with that i don't think i've ever had that conversation with them like why why did you give me a laptop and you know this was he was back at intel at that time so you know he was he was actually hand building the the machines at that time with spare parts um you know i there was times he'd come home with a couple of them you know we'd have the family one and then i would have one and i i probably went through eight of those breaking various components you know getting so many viruses because what's anti-malware because <laughs> lime wire <laughs> yeah don't lie yeah you said it was like 2002 right napster anybody remember napster like yeah I do. <laughs> you know what don't talk to me unless you've been in an icq news group actually <laughs> or, or an irc chat room and you have to ping the bot to get you to send the entire discography of a band you want one song from <laughs> then come talk to me <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I, I like Andy's question because, you know, what prompts a dad to give a kid a laptop at eight? I guess maybe it's more common and maybe that's like a generational miss for us, right? Because we can't relate to that. You know, for us, we were trying to get like the original Nintendo. I remember that being a big thing for me. I was like, <laughs> I need this Nintendo. My dad's like, I don't know what that is and you're not getting it. You know what I mean? Because it's like a new thing, almost like cell phones in like the year 2000, right? It was like, you don't need that. Who's going to be calling you all the time, right? You know, you, people just don't understand. So for your, even in 2002, for your dad to be that forward thinking, he did you a huge favor and a huge service, but you didn't need to take that path, right? Like he could have given you that laptop and you could have been like, I mean, it's okay or whatever. And I'll be honest, I probably would have done the same thing when I was eight because I didn't care about anything. Like I was just eight. I don't even know what the hell I was doing. Honestly, I was just being eight. (laughs) I certainly wasn't tinkering with computers. Um, They just weren't readily available. So yeah, I guess a different generation, different time, whatever. But still, had they been around, I don't think if really anything my dad would have given me, I probably would have just instantly been turned off by not yeah, because I, like I distrust him, but like, I don't know. Some people just don't have that relationship. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, you know, he, he is generally pretty forward thinking. And, you know, now that I think back on the story, like the laptop wasn't actually the first thing we used to have it, that old Pentium three that had like windows 98 or windows XP on it. You know, the thing, it was that, you know, typical, uh, was it gray, yellowish computer tower? You know? Yeah, with a huge CRT monitor. And I, I remember having that, you know, it was kind of in, in a closet in storage and I would always try to just take it and set it up in my room. So then the laptop came um, and then we started, we actually started playing, you know, at a very young age, I started playing World of Warcraft with my dad. My dad was huge into that game. He had multiple accounts. So I, I would always run a second account with him. 
Um, and it was all, I always had to be tethered to, you know, an ethernet cable because the wireless never reached to my room. Yeah. So at that point it was, all right, how do I get this internet to work in my room? The wireless doesn't reach because it's like 802.11a or, or B, like first gen wireless. It was B. So like, what, what can we get to, to extend the wireless and make it work so I can play games in my room? Huh? That's interesting. I have a very, very similar story because that's how I learned how that I actually liked this stuff, connecting things together. And it was because I wanted to play video games on a computer. That's wild, it's always, right? It's always video games. It's always, it's always video games. It's video games. I like, I'm looking back now and I'm thinking, I'm glad that like PlayStation and, and Xbox didn't exist back then with like wireless because you don't have to do anything now. You just connect to the SSID and tell them your password, right? And and if you got it from like an ISP and that's the one you use, like most people, you just write it down because it's written on the back of the modem. Like, but for for other folks, like cable internet just came out for me. Um, it was like 1998, I think, and my dad got one. I don't know why he got a cable modem. It was the weirdest things, but we had like good internet, and that's crazy because I would say that that propelled me faster in like learning about technology stuff than anything in my life up until that point because then you're like wait i I have cable internet like what does that mean and you try to figure out what that means and then you're like i don't know then 23 three years later you're working at a cable company (laughs) uh (laughs) that's a joke i do still work here but um but yeah it's stuff like that that kind of like sparks your curiosity but it doesn't always light the fire. It's like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like lots of kids grow up playing baseball and they're like, man, I'm really good at it. But you know, then that just fizzles out and that that's over with. So for you to start kind of like how Andy was saying, for you to start at, at eight and to have that kind of head start is huge, which doesn't make the 24 thing really seem that crazy now. Actually makes you sound kind of slow because... Wow. You know, <laughs> if, if I would have gotten started 16 years ago, you know, God, boy, the places I would be. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but, dude, that's a that's a heck of a feel good story. So let me just put put yourself back because Andy brought you back to the internship there for a minute. Let's go back to. I'm getting out of high school or maybe I'm doing a career pivot or whatever. What guidance would you give to someone who someday wants to get four certs in a week? Uh, that's tough. I, I don't know. I, I look at, um, I look at my, my second kind of real it job and how short lived that was, you know, even though the company was, it was a great, a great local company. Um, I, I think, you know, following what you know and following what you love is very important. At, at that role, you know, I wasn't doing a ton of Cisco networking. Uh, you know, we, we sold a bunch of Dell equipment. Um, it was perfect for our customer base, but it just, I, I wasn't into it. Um, you know, and it was a great feeling to, you know, when I started at Red River to get to immediately get back onto Cisco stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm a hundred percent Cisco focus. I probably always will be unless the company goes under. Hmm. Interesting. So your guidance to someone who is aspiring to be in your current situation is first find what you love and then continue down that path. Yeah. You make it sound so easy, but what if I can't find what I love? Keep looking. Keep looking. Yeah. You'll know when you find it. You'll find it. It's like, you know, it's like love. Oh, boy. <laughs> that's, that's tell, okay, exactly. Andy, tell yeah. us more. <laughs> I mean, it is. That's okay. All. In what way? Well, I, you're asking how you find a passion. You, you keep looking, you know, look under every stone. Keep, put yourself in different situations. I mean, or you can give up and just be a schlub and have a crappy job and hate your life. You know, Surround you yourself choices. with good people, too. Oh, yeah. And you smarter know, keep, people than yourself, maybe. Exactly. Smarter yeah. people you know, SMEs of the world, subject matter experts, people who will motivate you to, to, you know, make yourself better. I I mean, my girlfriend is probably one of the 
the biggest proponents of my success, you know, not only because, you know, she benefits from it, but, you know, she enjoys seeing me happy going to work. You know, there's been very few days where I think work is a job. You know, most of the time it's just, all right, what, what, what piece of technology do I get to play with today? What kind of config do I just need to, to create and, you know, see if it works. And if it doesn't work, how do we make this work? Hmm. Interesting. The family support system. That's a often overlooked piece of thing. Cause so Andy says it's like finding love, like finding your passion is like finding love or like a significant other. But what's funny is if you find a good enough significant other, then they can also help fuel your passion for your day to day. Boy, oh boy, guys, if we didn't just find the meaning of life, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I just got this really weird, warm feeling like come over me. I don't know. It could be the coffee beer. Uh, it's all speculative at this point, but <laughs> if I had to guess, it'd be more of the love thing than anything. Um, it's just an interesting thing, right? Like people always look at other other folks paths to what they would consider success. But the important thing to, to remember is that your success is going to be much different than anybody else's. So when you're asking someone's advice on like, how should I go about getting to where you are? I think you, as a, as a person that's like a thought leader and like, you know, a role model, it should be in your best interest to tell them you don't want to be exactly where I am. You want to be this version of who you are and it's going to look completely different, but you'll know kind of like what you guys said, you'll know, you'll know when you found the passion, you know, when you found the one. And I think you'll know when you, when you found success or, you know, at least somewhat, you know what it smells like. People will start coming to you. So having like having this, direct approach like if everybody's looking for this golden path like yellow brick road to get from point a to point b but aj will be the first one to tell you that it's all about the journey <laughs> you know hey get lost in the weeds man <laughs> get lost in the weeds the whole point here is that like if you listen to taylor's story that if you're if you're confused about where you want to go you could you could be like him and find it right away and, but that's he still, no matter what, when he got in those positions and he got those jobs and stuff, within those jobs, he was still trying to figure that out. Did some stuff and was like, no, nah, I'm good. I don't like that. Um, you know, maybe took a wrong turn there and then got right back on track and was like, ooh, I like this. I like Nexus. Ooh, I like VMware. You guys do a lot of that. Um, you know, so it's always just kind of be looking forward and and – you know, analyze your options, but not too hard because if you don't know your passion yet, like it's not going to be glaring you dead in the eye, like come this way, right? Like some Lord of the Rings scene, right? <laughs> like you, you just got to guess at some point. And I remember uh, one of our episodes, Danny was on there and he said, you just got to, it's like a leap of faith. I don't know. He had some stupid movie quote because that's what he does. But, you know, he said, hey, he probably, said. Probably from the 18th. He's like, Hey, just, you just gotta, you gotta do a leap of faith. Like just do it. Right. The hardest thing is just getting started, man. So there's no wrong answers. Taylor's proven that to us. Um, he's proven that it, if you, if you just work hard and find your passion early on, it's still up to you to make something out of it. It's not, it's not just finding your passion. It's actually doing something with it. Well, yeah, you, you just said work hard, and I didn't want that to be lost because it sounds like Taylor's a really hardworking guy. He he busts his butt and he hustles. My, my wife's got a great saying that I love is you can't teach hustle. I mean, it's it seems intrinsic in people's personality. If if somebody's just you know grinding every day and trying to be better and working their butts off, that's going to pay dividends. If you're passionate and lazy, I don't think you're going to get, you know, to the same place. So, I mean, you work pretty hard, right, Taylor? You're, you're, you're hustling, you're going after it. You're, I like to think I do. Yeah. Asking, I mean, it, no, no, it, he, it appears that you he, are. He does. He know, does. Right. He can, you know, there, pe people like Taylor are very rare because he, he can go to work all day long in VMware. And when he gets home, he'll have dinner. He'll hang out with his girlfriend for a little bit. And then he dives right back into VMware. Yeah. And, and so 
I, I don't want anybody to think that Taylor sat down in, in the year 2020 and had zero prior knowledge of VMware and scored three professional level certs. He's been studying for these exams for the last five years, at least that I'm aware of, because I've known him for like four or five years now. Uh, Ever since I met him, he's had a home lab. He's always done VMware in his free time. Sure, he got to do it at work, but he has spent countless hours just tinkering, playing, learning how to do new things. If we started talking about something at work, the first words out of his mouth were, I'm going to go home and lab that up. Yeah. You know, What's that 10,000 hours a Cisco thing Ice say, project. Right? He's never touched Cisco Ice before. He downloaded the VMs and deployed them in his home lab, and he set up all of his home gear to authenticate with TACX on Cisco Ice because that's what hmm. Taylor does, and that's how he's successful. You know, he, he just digs right in. He took that money that he earned through the internships and previous jobs and he invested back into himself. You know, mm -hmm. he treats himself as a business, as a mm -hmm. brand, mm -hmm. you know, that his, his lab in the four years that I've known him has gone through several different iterations and it's because he needed more compute because he wanted to play with more things. He needed a larger rack so he could support additional servers and more storage and faster networks or more rack gear, more, uh, more Cisco gear so he could learn some Nexus. Uh, yeah, he's got Nexus switches in that rack, man. I know that for a fact. Yeah. You got Nexus in there, dude? Come on. Yeah, I got two Nexus switches. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, you know they virtualize that, right? <laughs> you know, uh, AJ Don't came to it. me this morning with a, a Nexus question, uh, having some physical layer issues. Uh -oh. Can't do that virtually. No. Can't, validate, <laughs> can't validate transceivers on, a, on CML. You can't run BFD on a V9K. Don't try it. I spent a week doing it. It's a waste of time. You can enable the feature, put the config in, and it'll never neighbor up. Boo, virtual 9Ks. We probably don't have time to get into it now, Taylor. Maybe you could write a blog post on it, but I want to know how you study because you seem like yep. a beast with knocking yep. those out. And what I'm doing isn't really working for me, but it's all I have. We, yeah. It's been a recurrent theme of how to study and be more efficient. I, I don't think it. Taylor studies. He just lives it. Like yeah. it, it's just, it's that passion. I don't, I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Taylor, maybe you do, maybe you do sit down sometimes with the intent to study, but I would think that most of your learning has just come through sheer, uh, interest. Like how does that work? Uh, what happens if I do this? Um, I want to configure it this way instead of that way. Uh, I think that's, that's probably where he's learned most of what he's learned. Well, you guys ever see that analogy of like the, the picture of, you know, the iceberg, Right. And it's like people only see the tip, but a majority of the iceberg is actually underwater where you can't see it. Right. Which is obviously what makes them so dangerous. This is this is a perfect example of that, because on the surface you see, oh, hey, 24 year old Doogie Hauser. You might not get that reference because you're only 24. <laughs> I, I don't. OK. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. That's oh, man. He was a little nerd, Taylor. <laughs> he was, a, yeah, he was a child prodigy. He was like he was a fifteen-year-old like MD or something. Yeah, yeah, it was a whole TV show. It was, it was awful. It was awful. So, <laughs> so he, so you get like this education, right? And and you take and and do what you can, like through work, and you take on things that people aren't volunteering for. And all you're doing is just asking. You somehow found your passion in there, and then you and then you drove it home. And people only see, oh, a twenty-four-year-old guy gets four professional certs in you know three weeks time you know the first thought in everybody's head is like oh lucky oh i bet he has plenty of time to himself or you know obviously he doesn't have kids or you know what people do is they make excuses in those scenarios to validate why they don't have it um it should be doing the opposite to you it's i'm not talking about you taylor i'm talking about the people that have heard your story they, it, it should be lighting a fire under your ass like this kid can do it by 24 and all he does is like care, you know, but you don't see all the stuff under the iceberg where it's like the dude goes home and he lives it. He asks for projects, you know, on the surface four certs in three weeks, you know, 2020 has been very good to Taylor Harris. And on underneath though is just a mess of crap. You know, they always say, uh, you never want to see him make sausage, right? Cause you'll never want it again. But uh, I think the same is true. Like Andy wants to know how you study and stuff. It doesn't even sound like you do. So that's a whole nother wrench in the spokes. And maybe you can do, I think you should do a blog post about that, which I think is good. You do study obviously, but you know what I mean? Not traditional. It's just, study. it's yeah, it's a different, a different way of study. Different, I mean, different way of study. It, whatever works was, for you. Yeah. When I was in school, I mean, we had these lab projects, um, you know, the, one of them specifically I remember is uh, distributed file system, you know, mm -hmm. create, 
design you know a solution that would you know provide HA file services to an organization. So really a softball toss to let's use DFS and um, you know Active Directory. And we were working on a project at work related to MDT and imaging. So I'm like, can we use DFS as the MDT deployment share and then stretch that across the WAN to make a highly available deployment share with images that are shared between servers. So, you know, you take, I, I guess what I'm getting at is like, I tend to not take something at face value and do all of the objectives. I almost always make my own object, objectives yeah. that are add-ons to what's needed in the, in the project. And I, so I did this project in college. It was like my junior year. And, uh, Two years later, it's now incorporated into the curriculum to do something along that line of, you know, design basically. Yeah, design. Yeah, yeah as yeah. well as let's let's use this, you know, solution that's meant for task A, but let's modify it and make it work for task B and C. Right, it, it's a tool, right? We we talked about this with other guests. It's it's like you have all these tools, and, and as designers and architects, which you're not. Um, that's what they do is they, they use all these tools, like, like the ones you learn in school and inserts, and then you take those tools and you implement those tools on what you're trying to accomplish. The more tools you have, the better off you are because you can get more specific. Um, so that's, I, I think that's huge. Um, I, I speak for all of us. I know AJ has to put up with you on a daily basis in, um, <laughs> in a work capacity for I think eight that's hours. the other way around. I think Taylor puts up with me. I'm sure he does. Yeah. That, I would actually agree with that. So if, if however you do want to see what uh, Taylor's up to, you got to join our discord channel. It's all about the journey. Uh, again, we'll have links to that on our website, the art of network engineering.com. And you'll see, we have a, a cool channel that's hashtag winning, which is exactly what you might think it is. It's, Basically, everybody's sharing all the wins they have. So, of course, Taylor's been very active in there <laughs> because he's winning every five seconds. <laughs> Poor guy. Um, but it's it's a cool space, you know, where you can get some more encouragement to keep going, which I think is really one of the core foundations of having that Discord channel. But we're all in there. All four of us are. Um, so, yeah, find us, artofnetworkengineering.com. Um, we'll have links to uh, in the show description to all of Taylor's stuff as well. Taylor, you have a blog, right? I do. What is that blog, sir? Uh, so it's blog.ucadministrator.com. Blog.ucadministrator.com. So your hits are going to go and through the roof. And the Twitter roof. handle is? Twitter handle? Uh, at ucadmin. At ucadmin. Yeah, he loves unified communications, this guy. Well, no, 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 no. Unified computing, like Cisco UCS. Let's, oh, let's get okay. it right. okay. Okay. Well, you know, UC <laughs> means a lot. Hashtag, you, you did say you wanted to be a collab that real guy. time. <laughs> You're talking about collab certs, man. I don't know. I mean, I gave you a little too much credit. Um, but no, th this has been super insightful. I think it's always good to hear like other people's perspective, especially someone as young as yourself has been so accomplished and done so many cool things. Uh, we totally appreciate your time because we know that you'd be rather studying for a professional level exam at this point in your day or taking one and passing one, whatever. It's a, <laughs> just a normal, just a normal day of the week for you. Find us on the internet, join the discord, have some fun with us, chat with us, ask us questions. Taylor's on there as well. He'd be love, love to give you more feedback. I'm sure even some, some specific guidance to yourself. He loves hearing about that kind of stuff. So until the next episode, see ya. Hey everyone, this is AJ. If you like what you heard today, then make sure you subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcatcher. Smash that bell icon to get notified of all of our future episodes. Also, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We are at Art of Net Eng. That's Art of N E T E N G. You can also find us on the web at artofnetworkengineering.com, where we post all of our show notes. You can read blog articles from the co hosts and guests and also a lot more news and info from the networking world. Thanks for listening.